Many industries are now considering geopolitical risk where in the past they wouldn't need to care less about it because of the way society has changed. A perfect example is the apparel sector or retail. You know, companies, big brand names who are selling into, into foreign markets. Now, like Gap, for example, who produced a t-shirt of, of, of China and they didn't include Taiwan. And, you know, the Chinese market and, and China, the CCB became very upset about it. And a lot of brand ambassadors cut ties. Chinese brand ambassadors cut ties with the brand. There's big boycotts of the brand. And this isn't only the Gap that's faced, but many other companies which have faced these issues. Whether it's branding like this or whether it's, you know, you know insensitive adverts or whatever, these things are now front and center of companies. And I think geopolitics is important, but it's not the only thing. It's a hybrid thing. This is why this is why the G4 is so important. It's more geoeconomics, geopolitics, societal change. I don't think you can just sell geopolitics as a service anymore because the world is so interconnected that, that geopolitics is probably one slice of the cake that you need to consider. So if you're saying geopolitics is all we do and that's all we know, it's great because you're honing into it, but there may be things that don't encompass geopolitics that your clients are going to ask you about. And if you don't know what to say, then your your actual offering isn't as uh, strong as what it would have been if you encapsulated more of it, which is why I think our approach is so unique is because we're encompassing this. And also something that what we're doing is that we are actually in the process of developing the world's first global power index, which explores a nation on these COPs and how they develop, which is going to be then turned into, into a software that clients can use, that can be changed and used um, by our clients to understand how nations are developing, not only isolated within themselves, which is what many geopolitical risk firms do, and they have country risk reports. Now you tell me, if you as a person develop not only by your own growth, you have people in your life that made you who you are today. That's the same as a nation. A nation has foreign direct investors, they have allies, they have foes, they have the populace, which is an aspect of their development. And if you only look within a nation's borders and cut everything else out, then you're really blinding yourself when you're walking into this. And that's not as valuable as having, having an approach which encapsulates how the world is changing in real time. That's where the value is. And if you can make it more software oriented, that's a plus. You know, but this, you need to do it in a way that doesn't say we have the magic ball which can predict things because very quickly, people may be in, intrigued. You may get a few clients out of it, but when they see that it's not doing its job, you lose your reputation and you know your, your solutions take time to then reimagine because you already came into it with the perception that you have the magic formula. You know, anyone's trying, trying to sell you magic formula is selling you snake oil. And uh, for sure companies now, which may not have geopolitics at the front of their mind, as, as I mentioned, apparel and others, will not be able to see this straight away, but companies and industries like oil and gas, for example, which are born into geopolitical chaos. It reminds you of that Batman quote with Bane, where, you know, Bane says to Batman, oh, you just trained in the dark. I was born in the dark. You know, I, I, was, I was trained not seeing anything. That's kind of the case of oil and gas companies. They always operated in very high risk areas, emerging market areas, and they, by their business model, they needed to be more aware of how geopolitics impacts their businesses. But as technology develops, fintechs, medtech, legal tech, apparel, as I mentioned, retail, skincare, L'Oreal, all these different companies and these kinds of industries, when they go into these markets, they really need to be aware of not only the geopolitical situation, but how they're perceived in these parts of the world. Disney is a great example and their kind of mishaps in China with the Mulan film, how they, it was a big you know, misstep. Many different kind of companies and industries now need to consider geopolitics so as an offering if you're like a if you're like a have an off-the-shelf solution then you, you're not going to be able to apply real solutions to your clients